Wait, no, take this out. This goes here. This doesn't go here. And you got to figure it all out and just get a balanced budget. How many's had a walk-sided budget before? A lopsided budget, sorry. A lopsided budget before. Hey Amen. A balanced budget here tonight. And what I want to preach about is we need to have prayer balanced in our life. And we also, in our prayer life, the prayer that we pray needs to be balanced as well. If I can, just for a short moment, I want to dive in and to preach three parts of this scripture that I read. There's three different things here. And, uh, and preach to you what the Lord tells me to preach. We see here where Jesus was praying in the scriptures. And he said he stopped, is what the Bible said. He said he ceased his prayer. And when he stopped, the disciples asked him to teach them how to pray. Have you ever been sitting beside somebody or heard somebody pray and they just seemed like they knew how to pray? They was praying and it wasn't. It seemed like they wasn't even trying to pray. It just was just praying, just speaking through them. And they were speaking words that you could understand. I'm not necessarily talking about the Holy Ghost. I know the Lord, the Holy Ghost can come through and pray and make it to that later on the sermon. But you just they just pray and you knew they knew how to pray. I believe that's the way Jesus was here. He was praying to the Father and he was just praying. And they was probably sitting there, they were probably like, wow, he knows how to pray. He knows how to pray. And so one of the disciples, the Bible doesn't say in this portion of scripture, asked him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. And so he went in and gave us the famous Lord's Prayer. And we all know that prayer. We all can dive down into it. Everybody knows. Everybody's already heard that. But just to get into it just for a moment, it says, when you pray, and it gives us the example how to pray. It gives us, so, if you can say, the budget of how to pray. And so we see he starts off talking about our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then it gets in different parts of the scriptures. It gets, or, I'm sorry, different parts of the prayer. And praying for ourselves, praying to God. And so many times I think in our prayers, we don't have a balanced prayer. We pray too much for this and we pray too much for that. We don't probably praise the Lord enough in our prayers. We may talk too much about this and may talk too much about that. I don't think we have a balanced prayer enough. I, I was in uh, the bank the other day and they had this thing sitting there on a the sign. And it said that your house payment needs to be no more than 28% of your entire monthly income. And it said your car payment seemed to be, and it went through and it gave these percentages of, of no more of what you needed to have from the money you came from spending in. So sometimes I think that we need to sit down and try to figure out, are we praying about what we need to pray about? Are we praying about the sinners? Or are we praying about something in our life enough? Or are we praising the Lord enough in our prayers? But then also, are we spending enough time in prayer? Are we spending enough time in prayer? If uh, if every week we came to church and we had a big whiteboard up here and we asked, okay, how much did you pray this week? On Monday, Tuesday, all the way through Sunday, and we had to write it down. Every single week. Would you be embarrassed? Would you have prayed enough through the week? But everybody would be like, yeah, I know he prays. He prays enough. Let's see, this, this is a little bit different here now. It's a little more slow pace than what I normally preach like. But how, 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 how would that be? Do you pray enough? Nobody knows but you. Do you pray enough? If, if your name was up there on the board and everybody could see what they say, Wow, they only prayed two minutes that day. Yeah. Or wow, they, they prayed an hour every day this week. They prayed two hours one day. Do we have a balanced prayer life every day? Yeah. We're getting down where the rubber meets the road, and I'm preaching to myself here tonight. I'm not going to preach very long. So we need to have a balanced prayer when we pray. We need to balance what we pray about. I believe it's good. You can say 25%, 25%, 25%. I don't, I don't know how you need to pray. Amen. But you start out praising the Lord. 25% of your prayer. Praising the Lord. Move into the other 25% of your prayer and, and, and pray how you feel like you need to. Pray pray for yourself. Ask God for the things you need. Move on to the next 25% and pray for your family members and pray for the church members. I don't know. I'm just 
I'm, 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 I'm suggesting something. The last 25 minutes, pray for lost souls. Pray for the church and pray for God to move. I'm not sure, but do we have a balanced prayer? Do we have a balanced prayer life or is it lopsided? And the second thing that I want to preach about here tonight is the scripture said, and he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go into him at midnight and say unto him, friend, let me, lend me three loaves. Now, midnight today is not as late as it was back then. Seems like a lot of people stay up to midnight nowadays and they don't go to bed. But back then they went to bed when the sun went down. So midnight was in the middle of the night. We see here where it says his children was in bed with him. Most of the time, there was just one bedroom houses back then, and so everybody kind of slept in the same room. So if he was knocking on the door, if he would have got up, he would have woke everybody up in the house to give him that bread. But he kept on knocking, kept on knocking. Have you ever asked, had somebody keep on asking you for something? I know I have. My goodness, my little boy Drake, he's so persistent in anything that he wants. He's going to ask you 50 or 100 times until he gets what he wants. He's persistent. I think he gets that from his mom. He's persistent. He keeps asking until he gets what he wants. And sometimes I think in our prayers, and not being selfish, the Bible tells us to, asking you shall receive. Not, not saying we need to be selfish, but sometimes I think in our prayers we don't ask the Lord enough. We pray to the Lord and we say, Lord, would you move in this situation in my life? And two months pass by and we quit praying about it because God hasn't moved in that situation. What would have happened if he would have just stopped knocking on the door after he said it's too late? Went back. He wouldn't have had any bread to give to his friend that was on his journey. But he kept knocking on the door. He kept knocking until finally he got up and said, I'm going to get you what you need. Sometimes in our prayer life, I don't feel like that we pray enough about certain things. Lord, you haven't moved in this situation yet. I'm just going to stop praying about it. Lord, you haven't built the church. There's no use in even praying about it anymore. It's just, it's in your hands. If you want to build it, you build it. Lord, you haven't saved my lost loved ones yet. Lord, I know you can, but if you will, you do it. Lord, you haven't moved in this situation in my life. You haven't healed me from this. Lord, you haven't blessed me financially in this area like I'm needing to. And so we stop praying about it. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Lord wants us to ask. The Lord wants us to ask. I know that I want to try to do everything I can for my kids to provide for them and give them what they need. Um, and if they ask me for something and I can do it, if it's in my power, I want to do it. Um, I was talking about Drake. I think he gets that from his mom because she, she's, she's very much like that. And she was full whenever she was growing up from her dad. She was the only girl, the baby girl. She'd ask him one time and he'd get it. But after we got married, she had to ask me about 25 times. But if she keeps asking, eventually I get it. But there's one thing that I haven't gotten that she's been asking me for about two years. And she knows exactly what I'm talking about. And one of these days, I'm going to go get it. Because she keeps asking me for it. But it's just not the right timing yet. And so that's sometimes how the Lord is. We keep asking him. And he knows he wants to do it. He's going to do it. She's been asking me for two years. Why haven't I already got that? And sometimes when we're praying, Lord, why haven't you already moved in this situation? The Lord saying, it's not time yet. I, I, I'm thinking about this, and I want to do this before this happens. And we keep praying, and we just quit asking. If she stops asking me for it, I'm probably not going to get it. We quit asking. But we need to continue to ask the Lord for the things that we need. If God's given you a promise, don't give up on it. Continue to ask the Lord for it. Continue to ask God for it. Because he wants to give it to you. Amen. If you, be, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? God wants to give you the Holy Ghost. God wants to give you the good things. God wants to bless you. Sometimes I don't think we ask enough. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. Last thing I want to talk about is we all say that we want sinners to come into the church, and we all say that we want the church to be built, and we all say that we want the church to prosper. But are we praying about it every single day? Do we have a balanced prayer in our devotion? I know this is kind of different here now, but this is what the Lord gave me. Do we have a balanced prayer life? Are we praying enough? Is anybody in here, can they raise their hand and say, I think I'm to the, I think I'm to the level that I'm praying enough? If you are here tonight, shame on you. 
Shame on you. You shouldn't say that I'm to the level that I need to pray enough. I could get better. You never are. You can always pray more. I know I could pray more. I know I probably don't have a balanced prayer life. I know I may not ask the Lord everything that I need to. I know I may not pray about the church being built every single day. Every single day I may not ask the Lord to save sinners. Every single day I may not be doing the things that I need to do in my balanced prayer life. You know, it's real quickly you can get out of a budget. Real quick. It's a day-to-day -day thing. If you have a balanced budget, it's every single day. Just one day you can mess your entire budget up. And that's the way it is in praying. Just one day, if you go without praying in this area, or one week you don't even pray about this, you can mess the whole prayer balance up. I want to have a balanced prayer life. How about you? I want to pray about what the Lord wants me to pray about. You know, this is the most powerful weapon in the world, prayer. And it's the most neglected weapon that us as Christians use, I believe. The devil does not like us to pray. The devil hates when we pray because that's one thing he cannot stand. That's one thing he has to bow down to is when we pray. And, and, and why is it that that's what we neglect when that's what God gives us the tools to use and we don't use them? I want to have a balanced prayer life. How about you? I want to ask the Lord for the things I'm supposed to. I want to do what I'm supposed to in my prayer life, and I want to pray more. I want to challenge you here tonight. If you're not praying enough, to spend an extra 15 minutes in the Lord and see what God will do for you. You say, I don't have time to do that. If you spend 15 more minutes in prayer, it's going to seem like you have an hour extra time. I don't know how that happens, but it does. You say, I don't have time to do this. We have time to do everything else that we want to do. We have time to be on our cell phones. We have time to run over here. We have time to go do this. I don't have time to pray extra. If you want to, you will. Do you want to? Do yes, you sir. want to have a balanced prayer life? Yes, sir. Do you want to pray how the Lord wants you to pray? Lord, teach us to pray. In the name of Jesus. Tonight when we come out of these altars, I want us to ask the Lord to teach us how to pray. Lord, what do you want me to pray about? Lord, in my prayer life, am I doing how I need to? Am I praying enough in my prayer life? Am I spending enough time with you, Lord? Am I praying about sinners long enough? Am I seeking your face about my family members how I need to? Lord, teach me how to pray. And if you sincerely ask the Lord to teach you how to pray, he will teach you how to pray. And he'll show you the things that he needs to. And the Holy Ghost will pray through us. If you get down in your prayer and you don't have a balanced prayer life, and it's just a cold, dead, dry, and you're just you're, you're praying the same thing to the Lord over and over and over and over, the Lord's not going to teach you how to pray. But if you get down and sincere, sincere, sincerely say, Lord, teach me how to pray. I want to pray how you want me to pray. The Holy Ghost starts praying through us. And, we, and as the pastor was saying, we start speaking things we don't even know. We start talking to the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is speaking through us. The Holy Ghost is speaking through us, and we're praying how we need to. Are we spending enough time in our prayer lives praying in the Holy Ghost? Are we praying in the Holy Ghost every single day? We need to. I want to have a balanced prayer life. How about you? Yeah. Anyway, let's all stand here tonight.